Hickok 45, you're looking at a beautiful sight, are you not? Yes, if you like bolt action rifles, and guess what, the Mauser was a pretty good one. You could say it was one of the best, right? <laughs> well, this is a chapter two, a real chapter two. We did a range two with this. This is a Russian capture, 99% sure, okay? Uh, Mauser, eight millimeter. This one was made in Steyr uh, in Austria. And uh, you all seen it, many of you. Maybe I'll link to that first or second video or both, if I can find them, right? And uh, I'll talk just a little bit, but it's a chapter two. Just, I wanted to shoot it. I, I ran into it recently, looking through a safe. <laughs> Hadn't seen it for a while. And I thought, you know what? I haven't fired that rifle and I don't know how long. And uh, there is a way to remedy that. And I'm going to enjoy firing it. Hope you do. And I, by putting this extender on, I'll enjoy a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to do that. All right, let's put these rounds in the chamber or in the magazine. They don't want to go. What's wrong with it? I hope this is not a an incorrect uh, clip. That has happened before. I guess not. Got some weird catch on it there. All right, eight millimeter. We got from Federal. Premium, good stuff. And why don't we just start off with a major shot right here, because it's one I can probably make <laughs> without missing, I think, right? Boom! Also, don't forget the uh, Sonoran Desert Institute, the sdi.edu. They uh, help support every single video that we do. And we really, uh, we love those people too. So, appreciate y'all supporting the people that help us. What do you want me to shoot now? Come on, speak up. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. You folks never change. All right. I know what you want me to shoot. All right. You feel better now? <laughs> I bet you didn't see that bullet. Sometimes you can see a 45 uh, ACP or 45 Colt, you know, arcing to the gong, but not a rifle round usually. All right, let's, uh, let's put the last one on the red square plate. All right. Oh yes, Mauser. They kind of set the standard for bolt action rifles, didn't they? Yeah, it's been a while since I fired this thing and I, I, I missed it. You know, I've got the nice, I brought it out, uh, Maybe a little comparison. This is uh, trying to rain a little bit. This is the uh, BFI uh, uh, Urbendorf uh, German Mauser that's all matching. You know, this is what a Mauser is supposed to look like. Okay, in terms of the bluing, everything. Some people think the bolt was in the white. No, they're blued. You notice the the cigarette holder back here. Ha ha ha! That's for taking down the bolt. I showed you all that in the video. It's not a cigarette holder, and uh, the butt plate. They changed those in around 1940, I think it was, to this uh, this type. And uh, see, they're not they're not blued. They're they're in the white, just like that. Okay. Uh, point that out for a reason, because again, the German captures. I'll take this off. The the uh, excuse me, the Russian capture. This was captured probably by the Russians, and so that's kind of interesting. They're not matching. They're rarely ever anything matching on the Russian captures uh, because of the way they refurbed them and everything, but I'll talk a little bit about. But when they did the refurbing, they uh, they painted kind of as a black type of paint. You've seen out a lot of mil military surplus rifles probably, and that's why that is black, and so is the cigarette holder and the bolt takedown hole. Okay, so, you know, you can tell it's been painted. And they did that in the refurbing process, as I understand. Just as they did the whole the whole gun. If it was metal, you know, they, they painted it up, okay? Now, this particular one, uh, it appears, if you know more about it, which you probably do, if you know Mauser's really well, it appears that somebody bought this one somewhere along the way, and they probably sanded down that stock and worked on that. And they took down the old black stuff off the most of the metal. So that's got an, actually a nice finish. I like the way they did that, took it down. Uh, so somebody's done some work on this one, I think. Okay, I might be wrong, but I think they did. 
and it actually looks better than that original one over there in a lot of ways it really does now that one everything on that is matching a serial number and that's a, a primo uh, you know mauser it's also 43 1943 not 1843 okay let's shoot this one again but this is good i had this one first i bought this one so well i think we had a video in 2011 even maybe 12 and then i think 2012 might have been the last video so I apologize. I'm really sorry. I waited eight years to get it out again. Okay, I'm sorry. I can't help it. You know. So let's uh, let's put some more rounds in this thing, and let's take a couple shots. Nice old eight millimeter rounds. I'll tell you. Now you realize, and I, uh, you realize that I realize. Okay, that all I have to do is push the bolt forward. Okay, but these are kind of pricey, so I usually just do that if I'm not in battle. Now, when I'm in battle, I, you know, I just do it differently. All right, here's a couple of something. Uh oh, I can tell I don't have my extender on. <laughs> I can really tell. Uh oh, we have gone this long and not smoked any pot. Uh oh, hit the drum. Hope it doesn't break it. <laughs> Let's hit this target. All right, now here's where I'll demonstrate the accuracy of the Mauser. Supreme accuracy. I mean, it's just, it's amazing, really. I mean, you can put something in a bullseye for one of these things at that kind of range. So, uh, yeah, this is a German or a uh, Russian capture, we think. Uh, and many of y'all have commented on other videos with it and uh, thought it was and let's see so so you see the serial numbers well here's the the serial number of the barrel what is it uh, 8205 all right so now they left the markings on this one they paint a lot of those off on some of these uh the russians did but uh not all of them and uh, this one doesn't have the x on it a lot of them have the x uh, to sh that's what they just put on when they finish as i understand refurbing them and, but every serial number, nothing matches on the serial numbers. And because they would take all the parts out, all the metal, and they'd paint them that black stuff on them. And then they'd just in a pile with a bunch of others, and they'd put it back together. And they didn't, as long as it fit, they didn't care. But as I understand, their uh, technicians, uh, they would check them and make sure the bolt fit. Like they'd get, grab a bolt and put it back in, but they would do the, make sure the headspace was good and all that. Now, I don't know, some of them probably didn't, you know, end up with the best headspace they'll know that's how the bolt fits okay this one seems to fit fine i've not really checked it not noticed any issues with it but they would find a bolt that, that, that had the correct headspace or fit well and probably most cases they fit fine but and then they would uh use an electric pencil to put the serial number you know from the barrel on the bolt which is you see there the electric pencil it in there okay electronic pencil they did, they did the same thing on the trigger guard, and this has got a different serial. And there's all these parts are, are you know, mismatched, okay? But, uh, and, you know, the barrel bands, none of the match, the numbers match. I wonder why. You know, again, they just pulled them out of a pile and put them back together. So, uh, and again, as I was telling John, that doesn't mean it's a piece of junk. It has a lot of history. Uh, the thing was used, apparently, and it was captured by the Russians, okay? And then they put a lot of, they, they captured millions of these, as I understand, or a million, over a million, I'm not sure the exact number. And they just stored them away. And then they, during the Cold War, they got them out and they refurbished, I think, almost all of them. And, uh, and those are the things they did. They took them apart and they painted them, they fit them, and they threw away parts that were broken or cracked and just whatever. And then uh, one of the other telltale signs is, one of the things they did was they also, uh, put the serial number on the stock see so it's uh what 8205 you see the 8205 there that's not anything that was done you know like original when they made them originally you know this one doesn't have that you know not on the stock i think it's under the barrel or something there so that's again indication of uh the russians refurbing it and everything okay so i'm sure these guns have been out in the rain a little bit so we don't worry about a couple of sprinkles if it starts pouring, I might take off running for the barn, and I'll just leave you all out here with John, okay?
<laughs> oh, let's finish off some of this stuff. Oh man, eight millimeter. Look what it does. <laughs> Now this one has a Timney trigger in it, believe it or not. Oh, oh forgot, bowling pins too here. <laughs> so this has a very light trigger. Uh, some of you who do long range shooting and accuracy testing, you might be impressed with this rifle, I don't know, because the trigger would not be a limitation. Even though it's raining and I'm gonna let y'all go in a minute, I don't wanna leave any targets standing. I think I'll leave the watermelon for another day. Don't you think I ought to? Smoke a little more pot. Oh, there's a pot down there. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, I just think the top of it, I think. That's better. Yeah, I don't want to shoot the watermelon today. I'm going to let it survive. You think, really? No, I'm not. <laughs> wow. Wow, we have one more bullet. Let's put it on the gong. <laughs> wow, an exploded watermelon and a loud, loud gong hit. That's pretty neat. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to get this thing out and shoot again. Uh, uh, you know, even though it's raining. So, yeah, Russian captures, they have their own piece of history. I think for a long time they were considered very eh, less desirable, of course, and still are. Uh, it's compared with something like that, of course, but uh, the fact that the serial numbers don't match, yeah, it's not necessarily a huge deal. Uh, if it shoots well, it, it fits, and uh, I, thought, I'm, I think I was rudely interrupted. I was telling John, you know, it's kind of like if you had a bunch of Mercedes. You took 10 Mercedes out here and took them apart and put all the parts in different piles and then reassembled them not uh, paying any attention to which uh, you know parts went with which uh, vehicle you still have mercedes you know the fuel injection system and the rear left axle or whatever uh, maybe it was from this other car but it's a mercedes rear left axle you know so you still have uh, was that a good analogy maybe not but uh but you still have a mauser you know these parts and everything the quality uh it's just that they're mixed up a little bit. You know, we did that with our uh, 1911s, you know, when they were cleaned and refurbished lots of times. Uh, the parts, uh, you know, don't, don't match them. You have a Colt slide, you know, on a Ithaca or some other uh, frame, Remington, and, and, you know, it just happened, but it still worked. So, anyway, that's what you got with the Russian capture. This one's 1943, it's, it's just like that one. And, uh, and, it went through that refurbing process and you know the serial number see there's one on the bolt too well that's the one i showed you one yeah duh, sorry about that uh and you know the there's the original that is the serial number original on that bolt right there five four seven two whatever it is see so that somewhere on the planet there's a mauser okay you might have it and the serial number on your barrel is Five four seven two, I think that is. And so you know, it's there. You go. So write me a letter, and maybe we'll we'll match. Them. <laughs> maybe you have the bolt to eight two o five. Pretty cool, huh? So yeah, somewhere on the planet, there's probably one like that. And uh, the, but it's okay. It works. So uh, the safety is a different serial number and all that. But uh, that's okay. And the stock is a different serial number. Uh, but they force. They call it force matching. Okay. And uh, you know that's what you see. It's not. Uh, it's not like like when I first got this, I didn't necessarily know about Russian captures and much about Mausers. Really, I did not. I, I confess, and I still don't know everything, of course. But I just I I was suspicious. I looked at it. And I thought, eh, yeah, same, that bolt, that serial number. They they didn't put serial numbers like that, did they? Some, somebody's just kind of etched that in there, yeah, and then sold that to. Their brother-in-law said, yeah, see the bolts matching. Yeah, it's got the same serial number bolt as the gun. Yeah, someone tried to pull a fast one on somebody, you know. And No, it's, uh, it's what they did. It's what they did in Russia. They used an electronic pencil, and they matched them up. They, they tested them and, and fit them, supposedly, and then they electronic penciled in the, the serial number so that in the future, 
you could keep up with the correct bolt. So now this is the bolt for this gun, okay? And it fits, apparently. It's been fitted, and so you do want to keep it up, uh, you know, and, and you got that number to help you, okay? So anyway, more than you want to know about the Russian captures, but yeah, since it, can I shoot five more since it's quit raining? Yeah, I'll do that, okay? I wasn't quite shooting. I, uh, I didn't get my fill, and uh, you know, I to quit prematurely there. All right, all right, I feel better. I got five more rounds. Not sure what I'm gonna shoot, but I'm gonna shoot something. I'm gonna shoot some red plates over there. Oh, nice. Good old Mauser action. I'll try the one on the right. Yeah, I think I went under it. That first shot I had to go under because I brought it up just a little bit. I'm gonna try that one in the middle. Oh boy, that eight millimeter slams into him, doesn't it? And let's wrap it up. My last round on the gong. <laughs> I feel better now. I got five more shots in. So chapter two, uh, we got a range two with this. Maybe I'll link to that and to the. Uh, original but uh nice old guns you know the mauser is a solid solid bolt gun you know it's an understatement right most of the bolts have been based on the mauser you know invention bolt action over the years the quality ones and uh you know it uh, you may have a different favorite bolt action rifle military surplus rifle lee enfield or a, a mosin you know, or uh, what, whatever it might be, Arasaka, you name it, a lot of good bolt guns. Uh, this is generally considered uh, the Primo bolt gun, okay? I started to say the Cadillac of bolt guns, I don't know about Cadillac, maybe the Mercedes of, of bolt guns. And if you have never handled anything, for example, other than a Mosin, a gun, uh, you know, they're fine, they get the job done, but when you, you pick up one of those and work it and shoot it, and then you pick up one of these and work it and shoot it, you just move to a different planet, okay? Just just in case you've never handled one of these. They're, they're just they're really solid and really nice, okay? I guess you can tell I like them, can't you? Anyway, the old Russian capture, got it out again. If there's anything that you noticed about it, uh, you know, and you saw the markings, I think John showed you all that. They didn't get all those peened out or anything. Like I say, it doesn't have the X on it. It's a BNZ 43. Anything you notice that you're an expert in these things, you know, share it. Share it. So uh, I uh, appreciate y'all coming around and enjoying this baby with us. Life is good. Oh, yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastall. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastall for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com, and also while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.